Hello and welcome to the final part of Sonic Colors for the Wii. In this part we'll be sort of wrapping up the story and going through terminal velocity and terminal velocity is quite the short level so there won't be too much to cover here. But after we saw everyone having their parties at the end of the last part, I think maybe that was a bit preemptive because Eggman's still here. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> they really are the best Eggman sidekicks, aren't they? Well. <laughs> like, I'm glad they brought them back in Boom. Like, admittedly, I haven't watched as much as the Boom cartoon as I would like to. Like, I, what I have seen of the Boom cartoon is pretty fucking great, except for maybe the over reliance on meta humor. But you know, it's kind of it's the case of like the writers having fun with it, which I can understand. What, what other uh, thingy, uh, sidekicks does he have anyway? Well, if you think, ones, well, no, if you think like back to the older Sonic cartoons that were scratching ground to who got really fucking irritating most of the time, there was like in Sonic X he had, I can't actually remember the character's name, but like there were them like sort of sidekick robots. Yeah, I'm trying to remember, and wasn't there this like little purple creature thing that would send messages? Yeah, I think so. Like, I don't remember much from Sonic X on account of Sonic X being Sonic X. <laughs> yeah, so I just remember that his messages would blow up after every time. Oh yeah, I remember that. That was fucking weird. <laughs> Sonic X was fucking weird. I don't understand why though. <laughs> no, there, I like. I have a lot of problems with Sonic X, and some of them come down to the four kids dub. Like, the 4 Kids dub made a bad anime worse. But in terms of, like, the writing and whatnot, like, when they went into adapting the adventure arcs, it became really obvious, didn't it? Because, like, they built up this quirky world, and then they tried to adapt in, like, some really fucking edgy stories. Because, like, SA2 in particular, like, there's fucking government conspiracy shit. Or you've got Cream the Rabbit, and you've got Chris Thorndike, and these characters going about their day, and <laughs> it's just <laughs> such a... Contrast. Just notice that the energy that turns the wisps into the dark wisps, it hit the moon. The moon seemed to be quite whole. Mm. <laughs> well, we were just seeing the good side of the moon, weren't we? Oh. <laughs> so I love the fact that in the Twitter takeover, they mentioned the moon. Oh, did they? Well, I missed that one. I can't remember exactly what it is, but Shadow said something along the lines of maybe one day we'll uh, tell you what happened to it, but not right now. <laughs> well, in Sonic X, I believe it was reconstructed. I, I believe that was something they actually mentioned like in this series. Get yeah, proper <laughs> builders up there. <laughs> well, what that means is that, yes, that is absolute fucking bullshit, but Sonic X has a more cohesive canon than the main <laughs> series. Like, bear in mind, it was also Sonic X that brought in the like Shadow having his inhibitor rings thing. Like, it was Sonic X that explained that for the first time, that when he takes off the rings, he powers up. And that was adapted into the main canon in Sonic 06, wasn't it? Oh my it? god! <laughs> Because that was like the thing, like I think he, like I don't know whether it was shown off beforehand or not, but I think it was during the fight during like against the final hazard where he took off the inhibitor rings and that was like how he powered up and went after it. And then the final cutscene in Shadow Story in 06 where like he's got all the Mephilis clones that he has to take down, that was when he just did that almost without prompting and he just darted through them and took them all on. <laughs> so like. Sonic X brought a lot to the series. Wow. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it a lot, but like, I've bitched about this on HFC. I'll bitch about it here. Like My biggest problem with the 4 kids dub of Sonic X in the fight against the Final Hazard, in the Japanese version, they went it full in, it kicked into live and learn, and they had the fight. They could replace that with like some generic shitty music in the dub for some reason. Which makes no sense, especially given that Live and Learn is an English language song. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't get it. But yeah, there's not really much to talk about here. This first level here is just basically dodge these guys. And there'll be some other guys to dodge. It's really automated and the ending is underwhelming as fuck. Do you remember anything of this, Stephen? 
I'm just curious how the gravity is working in this situation. What, you haven't been worrying about that uh, through the whole thing? Well, to <laughs> be fair, I mean, Sonic's been on planets the entire time. Well, sort of with the uh, roller coaster one. Oh, that's nice. debatable there, but this bit, he's on a, what's essentially a giant pole in space, but. I think he's running down it. Yeah. Uh, if you think it's like the elevator they took to go up that's completely mm. vertical. I think that's what it is, like, it's not... Yeah, it is that, it's just, how is he landing on it, even though he's heading down towards her? I don't know, it's possibly just working the same way as, do you remember, I think it's either Hank Castle or Mystic Mansion from, like, Sonic Heroes in the Team Dark variant, I want to say. There's that part where you run in vertically along the side of the tower. Yeah. And so it was bullshit there and it's bullshit here. I mean, it's like, yeah, it's a huge piece of construction and everything with mass has gravity, but this is Sonic, it's bullshit. <laughs> mm. Yeah, well, I'm more curious about the motorbugs than Sonic, though. Because the motorbugs, this, like, the way they're dashing left and right, they're not, they're not in control, they're just objects, aren't they? <laughs> so, how's that working? And yeah, like, instead of just getting to the bottom, we have a really underwhelming fade to white and then Sonic just standing there in place <laughs> yeah. just standing on the side no big deal <laughs> no biggie it is it's there but yes we are now going into final boss territory Time to bail. so this came from somewhere <laughs> Ginga. <laughs> it fucking is! It's Mega Gengar! Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, Jesus! So this is where it originated from! Yeah, this was actually where the Mega Universe came yeah. into play! Like, it wasn't the thing in Geosync! No! Well, actually... Wait a minute... Yeah. Team Rocket always makes mechs that are sometimes based on the Pokemon of the month. Than yeah. That. Eggman essentially has a Mecha Mega Gengar. Mm. Team Rocket has made a Mecha Mega Meowth before. Mm. Is Eggman working with Team Rocket? Eggman is actually the founder of Team Rainbow Rocket. And that, <laughs> that's this. That's why we have the original Maxi and Archie designs in the thing. Like we're still in the original universe, <laughs> and it's Eggman's mech here that's going to. That's going to trigger the Geosynge weapon, and that is going to warp everything into the Delta universe. <laughs> I have autism. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! <laughs> but yes, this final boss here—it's a kind of cool final boss, I guess. They reused it almost entirely in Lost World. Yeah, but to a much lesser extent. I like Lost World, but its final boss is crap. You are? I, that's the best part of Lost World. It's a bad last boss. It is so piss easy. It's piss easy, but it's fun, and that's more than I can say for the rest of the fucking thing. It was so easy, it didn't feel fun. Especially in comparison to this. Yeah, I, I don't know, I, I like the final boss of Lost World, and I like this, but... This, I will admit, this is much better developed than the Lost World one was, and I do prefer this overall, and, like, just the theming with the wisps here, that, like, you know, it's got that extra bit to it, rather than just dash forward, jump, dash forward, jump, and, like, occasionally get things, but, yeah, I think it's randomised which of the wisps he uses against you, because I had to do a few takes to get this down right, and he seemed to do things in different orders each time. So maybe I was just getting lucky with certain things. Most of the attacks here don't really have much of a chance to hit you. The most difficult one to dodge is when he uses the cube and the spike together. Because that's when you've got to like dash over to kind of, you know, dodge the cubes. But the spikes are coming through at a different pace. So, you know, they can get you. Yeah, what do you yeah. think of the design of the boss, Chris? Uh, well, yeah, yeah, he's just uh, cool in that, yeah. It's, um, the, it reminds me of Tetris a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell! Like, I kind of think that's the sort of thing, like, I 
think we're past the threshold now of where you need to be careful of spoilers for Mania. If you think they've done a main beam machine boss, could we have a Tetris boss in something? <laughs> like, granted that has more ties to Nintendo given it's the Game Boy one that's famous, so maybe you could get that like in Mario at some point, that'd be pretty fun. Taste the rainbow, motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> I feel they could have done a move for the boss with the uh, rocket wisp, like he ends up sending down the missiles in your path. That could have worked. It could have. Like again, it would have changed the complete like layout of it, but still. I got my S rank. So I'm not sure how they could have worked in half a really that. Like, that's like the most non-lethal. <laughs> yeah, no, you just it just sort of floats around a little bit. Like maybe it does like a pounding light dash towards you or something. Oh, yeah, maybe. Who turned out the light? <laughs> uh, right, we're getting towards the end of the game now, so let's start summing up what we think of it. Chris, I'll let you go first, mate, because you've just got your blind impressions here. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Seems like a good Sonic game. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a, yeah, a bit blocky um, in some parts, but yeah, overall pretty good, I would say. What do you think of like, the just general tone of it? Yeah, the, the tone is pr pretty br spot on, really, I'd say. Pretty sort of similar to sort of Generations tone, isn't it, really? In a way, like if, to me it feels a bit more to it than Generations does. Generations felt a little bit sterile to me. Like, oh, right. not as a problem, but like, just if I were critiquing the story, like, I would say I got more from colours than gens. But yeah, this is just yeah. like a little escape mission, by the way. It's like, don't worry about it at all, it's just dodge pits. Stephen, what do you have your final thoughts on Sonic Colours? I love Colours. Good. I really enjoy <laughs> this game. It's yeah. definitely a game that I can repeatedly go back and play. Again, what do you think of the story? Story, good fun. Very simple. It, like you said, it's definitely got more to it than Generations. I mean, I really like Generations and its simplicity, especially the fact that that's got time travel in it. But the fact that it takes a really simplistic angle, it's like, eh, oh well, time travel, get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> time travel. Sonic's done time travel before. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, personally, Sonic Colors, it has its flaws in terms of level design. It has, like, that is a glaring issue to me, but it's got enough, like, in terms of its tone, in terms of, like, the fun levels to me, that, like, the problems are far overshadowed by just the pure joy that I get from this game. Like, when, whenever I play through this game, I'm aware of the problems, but they're not enough to bother me. And it's just something to it. It's a game that I just feel positive about playing. And that's just such a great vibe to have from a game. The energy that Eggman collected here was exploding. Was it essentially turning into a black hole? Maybe? Because it was tearing that entire station apart. And the wisps... Pretty much about to try and stop that. Hmm. How powerful are the wisps? <laughs> uh, well, they're the bullshit powers, aren't they? They can do whatever they're needed to do. So, oh, just like that, the wisps are cured of the frenzy. Mm. We they just... could do that the entire time. I still think they could have been something done to keep the frenzy wisps around and maybe they came to terms with it or something. <laughs> like, I know we're getting into fan wanky story there, but I kind of enjoy the frenzy wisps as a gameplay thing and I would have liked to have seen them back in later games. I think that was inspiration for the Wii U. <laughs> it basically is a Wii U gamepad, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> But that Miles Electric Tales did actually have that first in Sonic Unleashed. Like, I think it was the same model, but before Tails built all his translator gimmicky stuff into it. But this is kind of a sweet little ending, even if the Wisp carrying Sonic down was basically the end in a galaxy. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> oh, but it's a little sweet ending, I think. This game wraps up really well. And that CG is really nice as well. I believe this was Mars the Planet CG. Uh, 
also did Unleashed and done Zero Gravity and a few other Sonic things as well. It's all really pretty, but ladies and gentlemen, I've been the Flame Flower, Stephen, Chris, and this has been Sonic Colours. Bye bye for now. Finally, we can relate. Our side by side is fair. I knew all along we'd find some way to
put your backsides into it. Technically, we don't have backsides, boss. I don't care. Just push. We have to hurry. I already have my revenge planned out, and next time I will not fail. Of course you won't, boss. Of course you won't. On the bright side, a certain someone got their voice back. I feel like my own self. All I want to do is talk, talk, talk. Hey, remember when we were chasing those little alien guys? What's up with those things anyway? They sure were funny looking. <laughs> It's not that though. Duh. What I wouldn't give for the maddening silence of space right about now. Sushi, hey, I heard they started using fish. Barbara, we didn't bring any with us. Not that we can eat it since we're robots, but we kind of looked at it. I love looking at stuff. I love stuff. The fireworks on the end was great. Hey, how did we get all this stuff to blow up like that anyway? Loved it. By the way, I'm just going to start the guy. Where are we going?